Hello, welcome back to Informat Solutions. In our previous video, we introduced the topic linear equations and inequalities, and we also tackled how to solve equations when there are absolute values in them. So we are just going to continue that trend, and today we want to take linear programming. Linear programming is, um, actually deals with systems of equations and finding solutions to systems of equations. We may use simultaneous equations, elimination and substitution methods, but our main focus here is to use linear programming so that we find solutions to what systems. When we have a problem involving two variables, how do we get the solution set? That's what linear programming is all about. But before that, let's talk a little bit about systems and uh, linear programming. Okay, we have basically three types of systems and this comes as a result of the kind of solutions that they give. So the first one we will talk about is what we call the consistent solution. which gives us a consistent what, system. Now in a consistent system, this is what it actually talks about. When we have two equations of problems that are given to find the values of these two variables that are in question, when we actually get two exact values for the individual variables that we are talking about, we say that system is what consistent, so we have a consistent solution. For example, when we have these two equations, x plus 3y equals 7 and 3x minus 2y equals negative 12, and we have been asked to find the values of x and y we satisfy these two equations now we have various methods you can use that's the simultaneous equations method so let's use that aspect of our knowledge here and try to find values for x and y that satisfy both equations so with a consistent solution we can say let's multiply the first equation by what Three, so that we can eliminate x and find y. So when we multiply the first equation by three, say equation one by what? Three. And this will give us three x plus nine y equals three by seven, twenty one. Okay, and we have a second equation to be 3x minus 2y equals negative 12. So when we solve this system as we usually do, you end up getting x being equal to negative 2 and y being equal to 3. So we can see that we have distinct values for x and a distinct value for what y. So when the value of x and value of y exist, we say that kind of system that in these two equations give a format, a consistent system, and we have a consistent what solutions here. That is x equals negative two and y equals negative three. Now to represent this graphically, it simply means when you have your Cartesian plane, your y axis and the x axis. When we have these two equations drawn on the line, that's the number plane, we can get this equation and that one perhaps meeting at a particular place. So if this is the first equation and this is the second equation and we plot their graphs, they will meet at a particular place or they will have an intersection point. And when we trace that intersection, to the x axis and to the y axis, 
this one gives us the value of y and this one gives us the value of what x so we say a consistent system giving a consistent what solutions as we can see here so the two lines actually what intersect at a particular place once now let's talk about the second type of system that we have we also have what we call the inconsistent system inconsistent system and an inconsistent system gives us inconsistent what solutions now this arises when we have two equations that is from a problem and we want to find the individual variables involved their value and we actually use the simultaneous equation method or any other method for finding two variables at a time giving two equations and we are unable to get a particular value for the two variables in question it means that solution is what inconsistent and the two equation forms inconsistent system let's take an example here and see assume we have these two equations 12x plus 8y equals 1 and also 9x plus 6y equals 4 so we have these two equations here forming a system so how do we get to know that this system is inconsistent let's try to solve for x and y whether we get values for them or not okay so let's multiply equation 1 by 3 that's the first equation by 3 and we also multiply the second equation by 4 when we do that, we are going to generate two new equations which are similar to the first two. We are going to get 36x plus 24y equals 3. Also, we are going to get 36x plus 24y equals 16. Now, when we work these two equations that we generated out of the system, either using elimination method or substitution method, any way you use, you are going to end up eliminating x and y at the same time because they have the same coefficients. So, when we subtract the first equation from the second, we are going to get zero for this expression, which will be equal to 16 minus 3 gives us what? 13. But we know in actual sense, there is no way 0 can be equal to 13. So this is not true. Since the final solution isn't true, we say the system of equations here are what inconsistent and we have an inconsistent what solution. To represent this graphically, like we did for the early one, let's say we have our axis here. Why would there be an inconsistent solution? It's probably because those two lines or those two equations will be parallel towards each other. So there is no way they will meet. So since they have no intersection or meeting point, we cannot trace our x and y like we did for the consistent solution from the consistent system. So since 0 is not equal to 13, it means this system cannot be solved because the equations of the form given are what? Parallel lines, so they never meet. Now to talk about the third type of system that we have, which we call the dependent system. Now, when we talk of dependent system, here we actually have a solution which is consistent, but we have many solutions. That means it's to infinity. We can't have a particular number of solutions. The solutions are many, okay? Such a way that at any point in time, there is an 
answer or a solution which satisfies the equation but infinitely mean. So let's take an example and clarify that with what a graphical representation. Assuming we have these two systems here, x plus 3y equals 6, and we also have 3x plus 9y equals 18. With these two systems, if you want to solve by using simultaneous equation method, we say we multiply the first equation by what? 3, so that we generate 3x plus 3, 9y equals 18. We have our second equation which will remain constant. So in this case, you can see that now we are generating the same kind of what? Equations here. But when we try to solve this, since we have the same equations at the right hand side and the left hand side, when we subtract the second equation from the first one, we get zero here. Now, 18 minus 18 is also what? Zero. And it is true, zero is equal to zero. But here, because we have zero being equal to zero, it tells us that the solution is what? Infinite, many solutions. So with this, we can say this system is what? Dependent. And when we grab this, this is how it's going to be. Actually, one, line will be on the other so if this is the let's say one line begins here and ends here the other one begins here and ends there so because one is lying on top of the other the words coincide so at any point in time we can get values of x and values of what y any point in time we can get a value for x and a value for what? y as the line goes. So we have many infinitely solutions here. So we call this a dependent system, which is also solvable, but we have many, 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 many what solution sets. So these are the types of systems that we have and we have to introduce ourselves to it. We'll be ending today's lessons here and in our next video, we'll be talking about absolute functions in terms of what inequalities. So we meet again, say goodbye.